Okay, okay, all right, I know. Just hear me out. Since we did that one last week, we're gonna do this one, then we're gonna finish Please Please Me. Hi guys, welcome to the Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am, and we are back with them. The, well, he's a part of them, the Beatles. Uh, we're gonna be watching the video promotional video, whatever you want to call it, for uh, Penny Lane, because we did Strawberry Fields Forever last week, and I was highly encouraged by many of you fine folks to uh, check out this one as well. So that's what we're going to do today, and then next week on Patreon, we're going to finish Please Please Me, and then continue on our journey. Um, I kind of had a rough night last night, I'm not going to lie, uh, so I'm uh, just taking it easy. I've been really working myself hard with these videos, <laughs> believe it or not, so um I'm just having an easy day today. Just we're gonna enjoy the music and relax. We'll worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow. That hair, that 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 Chapin song, fucked me up, dude. But in a good way, though. I had a good struggle session. All right. So I don't know what year this was released exactly, because I know they did them after the fact. I think, or it was d during Sgt. Pepper. The recording sessions or whatever. So I don't know exactly, but let's do it. The Beatles, Penny Lane. In three, a two, a one, go. Penny Lane, there is a barber showing photographs of every head he's had the pleasure to know. And all the people that come and go, stop and say hello. The lads. Fifteen Subba films. Hmm. So that was supposed to. So that could have been on Sergeant Pepper. Not supposed to. That was could. So that could have been on Sergeant Pepper. It's an interesting, interesting track. Just like Strawberry Fields. Like I, I, I'm one of those guys who would think like, all right, hypothetically, it is on the album. Like, where would they put it? What would they take out? You know, sort of thing. Um, because that was. 
beautiful, actually. Hold on. Let me make sure. I had it up, but I am an idiot. Uh, da, da, da. There it is. All right. So it says it was released. Yeah, the double A side single Strawberry Fields Forever uh, in February 1967. It was primarily written by Paul McCartney, but credited to Lennon and McCartney songwriting partnership. The lyrics refer to Penny Lane, a street in Liverpool, make mention of of sites and characters that McCartney recalled from his upbringing in the city. What an interesting cover. Genre, psychedelic pop, progressive pop, baroque pop, or orchestral pop. That's a new one. I like that. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, where is it? Um, so if McCartney wrote that, yeah, so he obviously is doing the, all right, so yeah, John Lennon did the congas. <laughs> Uh, Ringo did the drums and the handbell, George Harrison, lead guitar, hand claps, uh, John Lennon did the piano, guitar, ha the congas, hand claps, uh, Paul McCartney did the tambourine, the pianos, vocal, bass, so they, so they attributed the piano to both of them, okay, because I really like the piano, that was like my favorite part, I think, honestly, is just the, how it kind of, the chorus was just sort of bouncing off of that, just really bouncy piano that, you know, they kept playing, I don't know who exactly did what, but very good. Um, Ringo had a really, like his always, his like offbeat patterns he always does. It's so unique. And I went back and I read some of the comments on my A Day in the Life video, which I usually, I don't have time. There's, I'm not going to lie, this isn't like hyperbolic, but there's just too many comments to answer these days. So I kind of, like when I first post the video in the premiere, like within the hour or two, I'll, I'll usually try to answer a couple, you know, just to... Like, I read them all as many as I can. It's just too much to answer, you know what I mean? But I went back and read them, and everyone was really uh, in agreement in how uh, Ringo kind of just grounds the uh, abstract elements that they like to throw in there, especially what George likes to throw in there. I don't know if it, and John, I guess, the just psychedelic stuff, even though it wasn't really prevalent as much here, but there was that unique pattern that he was doing. It's such... The interesting rhythm that they play with in every song. Uh, and that's all Ringo, man. I mean, I know everyone has their opinions, and I've read some stuff that they would tell him how to play certain things. And But who knows, really? You got No one was in the room with them, except, I guess, George Martin and the engineers and stuff. But in the writing process, like that was just them, you know? So who knows? Uh, but I just really appreciate his drumming and just what he does, man. Like, Because they're such a unique band uh, at the same time that each member is unique in their own way, and he brings the exact right amount of percussion and um, expertise and just a strange unique ability to you know balance out the rest of this like titan titan group you know like that's literally a group of titans right there that's what i say those are like the final bosses of music it's literally that's the beatles you know it's the final boss and it's just those guys from this video dressed up like that <laughs> um i did enjoy his descriptions of the city obviously um I've never been across the pond, but I've always wanted to visit because that's where my ancestry's from, apparently. I went my entire life thinking I was Italian, full-blooded. Um, no, I'm straight up British, like 60% British. <laughs> it's like, what? I was adopted anyway, so like, I, you know, I my I know my real mom. I've met her before, and her she's full-blooded Italian. So I don't know if 23andMe is just a scam and they lie to us, or my birth mom's lying. Either one is suspicious, you know what I mean? So who knows? Uh, but I've always wanted to go there and just hearing his descriptions of the city and like what it used to sound like and be like and the people that inhabited it is very interesting. Um, I always enjoy when they add the, like, I guess that's George Martin, I guess the production, it's, you know, stellar as always, but just uh, the horns is a nice touch, the, um, the very bouncy piano. Uh, just seeing them in action, I kind of like this video more than the last one in Strawberry Fields which was a, um, a trip fest to be sure. But to see them just having a good time playing around and just enjoying themselves and being themselves in the moment, you know, I really enjoyed that here. That was, um, you know, aside from the music, that was my biggest takeaway probably. Um, and I know a lot of you all encouraged me to go listen to Strawberry Fields Forever uh, without the music video, and I did. Um, and yeah, it was definitely a different experience than with the video the video is very distracting in a good way though it's it was a pioneering a, it, you know feat in itself and it was beautiful and was strange and creepy and 
but it definitely is um, a distraction from the beautiful music that was going on there. And um, I'm glad that I took your suggestion because it was a very different listen. And I felt more, I, you know, I realized a little more about things. Um, it was definitely still psychedelic as hell, even without the video. But it was very interesting to hear it again without the video. And uh, thank you guys for suggesting that because I have a new appreciation for that track. I really do, even though I already really enjoyed it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, that was a great video. Seeing John, you know, happy and a lot, you know, healthy and doing his thing was very cool. Uh, just seeing them all, man. <laughs> and then that, them on the horses in the red, like, you know, equine, equestrian get up almost. It was very interesting. And then that random shot of the policeman up his face at the worst angle. I don't know. And then they're having tea out in the woods. I mean, what could be better, you know? <laughs> Ride your horses out to tea in the woods. Now that sounds like a day to me. All right. I think that's it out of me. I'll leave you all alone now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, next week uh, we'll be finishing Please Please Me on Patreon. And if you want to watch a bunch of other extra stuff, more Beatles albums, tons of Beatles albums, this is a picture of our Patreon right there. Go click the link in the description. Uh, join the $15 tier or up if you want to pick a request for the Beatles or any other band. That's the way to do it. There's a PayPal link as well. But if you want access to all those albums, unfortunately they're blocked on YouTube. Um, you can join any of the tiers. It can be the, the lowest tier, the highest tier, don't matter. Get access to those three and a half soon to be four albums. There's tons of King Crimson, some Jethro Toll that was blocked, some other random stuff, just um, you know, lots of behind the scenes content, me and my kids and everything. It's a good time over there. We have a community, I think of 400 people now and uh, I am grateful for each and every one of you guys. Thank you for being there. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. I will see y'all later. Hopefully. <laughs>